And we are back on Take Action News. Our guest for this segment is Roger Hickey, co-director of the Campaign for America's Future, where, in the interest of full disclosure, I note that I am a senior fellow. Roger, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, Richard, it's great to be on your new program. I've, I've followed WEAC closely, and it's, it's great to have you uh, as, as part of the, uh, uh, the, the people who run the place. Uh, let me, let me hijack uh, the program for a second and tell the audience that they ought to check out Richard's blogging on ourfuture.org and on uh, Huffington Post, and especially to, to, to cite a timely uh, topic, his piece on Chris Christie, the real face of the Republican Party, uh, is, uh, is all over the Internet today. So uh, check it out and check out his, his great blogging. little commercial we, there. We, well, we have very strict rules that every guest must promote me for the first 30 <laughs> seconds of their appearance. Thank you for that, Roger. Hey, Roger, you know, you and I get the opportunity to talk a lot about politics and um, strategy and the progressive movement. It's one of the things I enjoy about uh, Campaign for America's Future, our, our routine calls where we all get together and brainstorm on this stuff. But there are a couple of things I wanted to explore with you today while we're still in the early part of the year. You know, I think sometimes when you're a progressive, you feel as if you you're suffering from ADD, which I think I do, but which I'm told I do, by the way. But, but uh, you know, there's just so much going on. There's uh, there's trade issues, and there are uh, minimum wage issues. There are inequality issues. There is an election coming up for Congress. There are uh, mobilization issues, and minimum wage, on and on and on. They're all worthy. They're all important. Um, what should people, in your estimation, really be focusing on? We, we don't often get a chance to think big picture, but we got a year coming ahead. How should members of the audience be thinking about making an impact in the year to come? Well, I think uh, economic issues are the key. That's, that's what we do at the Campaign for America's Future, because uh, if you don't have a functioning economy, if you don't have an inclusive economy, you can't build the Coalition for Change. Uh, but I would say that I'm I'm somewhat optimistic because the media is starting to see that it all adds up. All of the various issues that you just mentioned add up in the minds of the press now to a new populist force in American politics and American life. And that new populism, uh, the the fact that it's being talked about. Uh, means that uh, that what all of the work that we've been doing on economic issues and on inclusivity in uh, in American life uh, uh, is starting to uh, to add up to something uh, approximating a, a movement for change. Populism has a, a a pretty distinguished history in American politics. Uh, it's the little guys getting together uh, against the big guys, and. Uh, and everything that that we've worked on 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 the campaign for America's future is now starting to have some impact. Uh, uh, we can now talk about expanding Social Security uh, instead of cutting Social Security. We can we're going to have a big debate about trade policy and whether uh, this uh, new trade treaty is good for for jobs in America. Uh, we've got uh, a real debate about inequality. And what should we be doing to uh, to reduce inequality? We're even winning elections on this issue, uh, like in in New York. So uh, uh, I think it's part of our job to keep on working on the issues that we are closest to, but to make sure that it adds up to uh, to fleshing out a new populist agenda, and uh, and we take that to our our friends and neighbors as well. So no, I think that's a it's a great summation. But I, I I think you know let's say I'm a I'm not you or me or someone who who does this every day. But I'm a citizen. I'm concerned. I'm involved. I vote for and support politicians, and sometimes they disappoint me. Sometimes they they get in office and do things uh, I wouldn't have had them do. Uh, what do I do to? Um, one, to remind myself that, because I think you're right, I think this was a surprisingly good year in many ways in 2013, and I'm not known for being, um, uh, you know, uh, overly sunny in my disposition about these things, but but I do think it was a good year. What do I do as I, as I look forward to an election year, A, to make sure that the 
people I vote for represent me, B, once they get elected, that they keep on representing me, and C, that I, I let them hear from me on the issues that matter to me. Yeah, well, the important thing, first of all, is to work on the issues that matter to you uh, in your community, uh, trying to build strategies for power and change around the things that you really uh, either piss you off or, or inspire you. Uh, but it's, I think we've learned a lot about politicians, uh, even about politicians that we were once in love with, um, that it's, it's really important in that period before elections to pin them down, uh, to show, uh, I mean, Barack Obama won because we organized an anti-war movement, among other things, uh, that was against the Iraq War. Um, uh, we should have pinned him down about, uh, about future empire building around the world. Uh, we should have pinned him down about whether or not he really believed in cutting Social Security benefits or not. Uh, this is the period of time uh, where uh, the public has this period before the elections coming up, where the public has uh, maximum leverage on the politicians. Uh, and uh, we ought to be working on uh, a list of issues that we want the politicians to tell them, tell us where they stand and, uh, and what they're going to do if we give them their, their, our votes. Uh, and we've also got to keep on building independent power bases so that uh, once politicians get in office, they have to face organized citizens who are going to hold their feet to the fire, uh, not just uh, cross their fingers and hoping that the politicians will do the right thing, but, but a movement for change that uh, goes to work every day, no matter who's been elected, uh, to try to force change on the political system. Well, that's a that's a good explanation. I, I I think that should work for us. And I guess the last piece of it is uh, that's the electoral strategy. Mm -hmm. But then uh, you know we're constantly being reminded, and rightfully, that our vision of the of the future, our vision of the society we want to shape, shouldn't be limited by the conventional wisdom or the elites definition of what's possible. I mean, that's how we shifted the conversation, for example, from Social Security cutting to expanding Social Security. But even that is a start. Uh, where, how do people help uh, build a movement that doesn't just insist that people who run on liberal platforms execute an, a liberal agenda, but really push the window, as they say, the Overton window, as, as the political scientists say, so that we have an aggressive and bold vision for a society that's as much more progressive as today's as FDR's was to Herbert Hoover's. Any thoughts on that? Well, um, we've, we've got to get together in, in public gatherings that we run. Uh, we do a, an annual conference called uh, Take Back America, uh, but we've also got a uh, uh, build coalitions that are that are around big issues like, you know, we really need a, a coalition working on full employment. Like everybody in America ought to have a job, and if they don't have a job, they ought to have a decent income. And and that that simple proposition, everybody have a, ought to have a job or an income. Um, it's a slogan that goes back to the '60s and way before that, but. Um, then you're not just talking about well, there's a marginal decrease or increase in the unemployment rate. It's you've got you've got a big touchstone: full employment, jobs for everybody, opportunity for all. Uh, that you're judging every uh, every news story and every uh, political move by. And uh, uh, we shouldn't just be for uh, the Obamacare health care legislation. We ought to be uh, have a building an ongoing vision of what a real health care system ought to look like. And we can learn a lot from other countries. Uh, and we need to be sharing that uh, with each other. Um, and uh, as you say, not, not having all of our organizing be focused just on, on telling the politicians what they ought to do, uh, but, uh, but conjuring up the kind of society that America should be and ought to be and with the resources that we have, uh, really could be. That's that's the other thing that we've got to pound on is 
this is a rich country. It, it is a truly rich country. And so many of the conservatives are, are trying to get us to buy the idea that, well, we don't have enough money for anything. Uh, we've got to teach people to accept a lesser uh, uh, standard of living. That is bull. That is absolutely bull. This is the most rich country in the world. We all ought to be able to have a decent standard of living, a decent uh, employment. Uh, well, I'm going to have to jump in there, but uh, Roger, we're out of time, and uh, thank you so much for that. I think that summarized it perfectly, um, and thanks for coming and joining with us on Take Action News. Okay.